Today we're looking at how to initiate drifts using the clutch in rear-wheel drive cars like Takami's AE86 from Initial D. And that means it's only right to demonstrate this technique at Mount Akina's five consecutive hairpin turns. To do a clutch kick drift entry, you'll have to drive up to the corner at medium speed on throttle. Then, at the turn-in point, you'll quickly stomp the clutch pedal to the floor while staying on throttle as you steer into the corner. Within moments, your engine speed will skyrocket, and once it's high enough, you'll release the clutch pedal just as quickly. This will allow your engine to deliver a powerful jolt of force to the rear wheels just as they are leaning into the corner, breaking their traction with the road. Meanwhile, the front tires, which have been relatively undisturbed, should keep their traction. This is going to let the rear of the car begin slipping out sideways into a spin. As the car slides out to the amount of angle that you want, you'll ease up on the throttle and catch the drift with counter steer before it actually spins out. Then, you'll apply stronger throttle to maintain the car's angle and drift as you continue around the turn. When you're ready to finish the drift, you'll release the throttle as you unwind the counter steer until the rear tires regain grip and the steering wheel is centered again. The fast engagement and disengagement of the clutch is what gives this drift technique its name. It really does look like you're kicking the pedal. Also, because clutch kicking adds speed to the car, it's considered an acceleration-based entry. This means it works best on corners with a constant or increasing radius that you're entering at a relatively low speed. The basic clutch kick may not be the best initiation technique if you're coming in fast and need to do a lot of braking to slow down for the turn. In that case, a faint entry, also known as a pendulum turn or a Scandinavian flick, may be better suited. You can incorporate a clutch kick into those more complex corner initiations, but the timing is different and I'll cover them in separate drift tutorial videos. Also, if you want to see me hang a YouTube silver play button from a friend's car and put tire marks on it while tandeming, be sure to subscribe. I can't do it without you. Now, let's demonstrate the technique at Akina's five consecutive hairpin turns. If you're entering the turn at low speed, you can start with the throttle floored, then do your clutch kick at the turn-in point, which feels really aggressive. Think of holding the clutch pedal down and building up RPMs like charging up an attack in a video game. Depending on the car and turn, you may only need a small clutch kick, that is, a short amount of time to build up RPMs to initiate a drift. On the other hand, you might need a big clutch kick where you leave the pedal down longer so your engine can charge up more power to kick the rear wheels sideways. The car's horsepower plays a big factor as well. Underpowered cars like the AE86 can benefit from a bigger clutch kick to charge up more energy, while a 2JZ or a V8 car may be able to get sideways from a tiny jab at the clutch or even simply flooring the throttle. This overview barely scratches the surface of clutch kick entries, and as a real drifter, I have lots of tips to help you master the skill. So, be sure to click this video for an in-depth breakdown of how to do clutch kicks, with powerful advice on what to look for as a beginner, and, for advanced drivers, how to adjust your technique to get the results you want.